Hey everybody, my name is Deja and welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing my February wrap up. I'm actually really proud of myself for at least filming this two months in a row. I'm actually really tired today, which I don't like because I like to show my energy, my true feelings in my videos because I feel like that's just more authentic. So I'm going to be drinking an energy drink. I really like these Alani new ones. I don't know why I'm telling you. This one's one of my least favorite flavors. That's why it's like literally the last one that I have left, but it's mimosa. So let's open her up. I just really thought y'all would find that pop satisfying. <laughs> oh. My titties are wet. <laughs> there were lemons. <laughs> you got lemon juice on your titty. <laughs> 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 I've never actually had a mimosa because, you know, underage. Ugh. But maybe if you like mimosas, you would like this. It definitely tastes orangey. And I don't really like orange juice, so maybe that's why I don't like this. But I love actual oranges. So tangent aside, I think February was an okay reading month for me. I had a five-star novel this month, which I did not have in January. But I think January and February together were not, like, super good reading months, like, quality-wise for books. Like, I didn't really have that many, like, outstanding favorites, which I normally have a lot of because I like a lot of the things. But I think maybe the older that I'm getting, the less that I like things. So, I mean, that's interesting. But I feel like I was just so tired of reading, like, not mediocre but like middle of the road slightly better than average books and that really <laughs> carried over from january into february and i think i just got tired of it but march i'm filming this in march and it's off to a better start but we'll talk about that in my march wrap up in about a month but let's talk about the stats that i had for february i'm just gonna scoot over like usual I'm going to pop in the stats right here and I'm going to be looking down on my computer to read them off to you. So I read nine books in February, which is down two books from January, but February is a shorter month. And February historically is known to be my worst reading month of the year. Oftentimes I read like zero books in February. So the fact that I read nine, I think that's honestly the best February that I had. And I think overall, I just hate the month of February. It has bad juju, bad energy, and I just don't like it. So having nine books is pretty good. I read four POC authors and I think most of them, if not all of them, were black, which I really like because it was Black History Month so that's excellent. I had zero rereads and four of the books that I read were owned books and I read 2,771 pages which is down about a thousand from January so overall in this month I would say that I was reading shorter books. For genres I read three fantasy, one horror, one non-fiction, three romance, and one thriller so a pretty good spread this month. For format I read four books that were a mixture of mostly physical and audio, three books fully on audio and two books as ebooks. All of the books I read this month were adult books. For ratings this month, I didn't rate one book. I gave one book 2.5 stars, two 3.5, three four, one 4.5 and one five star and I read six novels and three novellas. So I'm gonna start off with the book that I didn't rate and that one is called Black Magic. Um, the whole title is Black Magic, Religion and the African American Conjuring Tradition. I actually read this book for school but I wanted to count it because um, it was a full book and this is a nonfiction. It is really interesting because it is on African American religions, which is not something talked about as much today. I believe probably most African Americans have um, migrated into some form of Christianity, but back in slavery times and even during like Jim Crow, African Americans definitely had things that we know today like voodoo and hoodoo and conjure, which we don't really talk about as much, but this one was really interesting because it dived into that a lot. And while I did enjoy the read because I literally had to binge it in like two days and then I had to write it essay on it so I was writing an analysis of an analysis of a religion it was a really difficult essay for me to figure out how to write but I did enjoy the reading of this book because it was just something that I didn't know that much about but I find like conjure and using um like plants and things around you really fascinating so I really like that it talked a lot about that and how these religions specifically conjure and hoodoo gave African Americans hope during like the darkest time in African American history and I just thought it was so well done so if you are looking for something to learn more about early African American religions I would recommend this book. Moving on to my 2.5 star of the month that is The Hollow Places by T. King Fisher. This was the Saks of Strange book club pick and only Rain and I were able to make it through this book. A lot of people DNF'd it and as I said I gave it 2.5 stars. I definitely don't hate it. I don't have any sort of animosity towards it or anything like that. It was just very meh. Even now like trying to remember it to talk to y'all about it is very difficult because it was very unmemorable. It was delivering nothing. Like it really thought it ate but it definitely did not. I never found you funny. I never found you entertaining. I never found you smart. 
I just found you annoying. It was just so weird and there were parts of it that were very confusing but not in a good way. Like we read a lot of confusing books in Stacks of Strange and normally I personally don't really like those books as much but other people do but a lot of people did not like the confusing aspects of this book because it just honestly was too much and there was not enough explanation for what was going on in this book but let me tell you what it's about. The Hollow Places we follow this woman and she moves in with like her uncle who has like this um museum of oddities there one day a, a something similar to like a portal opens into this place called the hollow place i feel like we just did not spend enough time in the hollow place like i don't think this is a spoiler but we're literally only in it for like half the book and like that's like the whole interesting part is the hollow place and then i feel like after we came back from the hollow place it just was so boring and then the main character really thought that she was funny but girl really had no humor I really did not enjoy the jokes that she was trying to make like it really just was not funny at all to me um it didn't necessarily bother me but like it definitely was not achieving what it was trying to achieve and I know it annoyed a lot of other people the the jokes and stuff one thing that I did like about this is the main character has a relationship with this uh gay man and they're really good friends and I really liked the relationship I thought it was really sweet and I loved the relationship and I even liked the relationship with her uncle but he's not like super in the book honestly but I really like the relationships but everything related to like the hollow place and it being strange and weird just I don't know it didn't work for me I honestly thought this was a horror but it's actually marketed as a fantasy and I understand I just honestly wish it went more horror because it definitely had like two really horrifying scenes and I wish it just like really dove into that more because it was with it being fantasy they tried to like lighten it and it just didn't really work it just was detrimental to the whole book's experience but honestly if you want to know more of our in-depth thoughts on like specific things i would recommend checking out the live show which i will have linked in the cards but i just don't have that much to say because this book really was not memorable for me in any way shape or form so next i'm gonna move on to my 3.5 stars so the first one that i have is the deal by l kennedy and i actually have a reading vlog coming with this book and one other book in this wrap up in it and I think people will probably be surprised that I gave this 3.5 stars because I think they'll probably think that's a low rating but 3.5 is above average like decently above average and I did really like this book it just did not connect with me the way that the chase did and I know this is the chase is much farther down L Kennedy's writing career and that one just connected to with me on a personal level and this one while the chase is a very comedic book it is very like giving rom-com hockey that's kind of like l kennedy's stick usually she writes very like new adult college rom-com type books that have pretty decent steam in them and that is just not necessarily the thing i'm looking for i do really like new adult college books but like rom-coms are not necessarily like my favorite thing anymore and i think that most rom-coms i'm never really gonna rate five stars anymore unless there's like really good representation and um i did like this book but in this book we follow hannah and hannah is like a really good academic student in college and she's lived laugh loving it up in this class because on the midterm she got like an a i think or a perfect score and everybody else like bombed it like failed and so she is kind of just chilling like whatever she like focuses a lot on herself because she has like a job she is a singer so she like has to like practice for like this not competition but like a performance and she has school so she has a lot on her plates which i honestly relate to her a lot in that sense because i'm in a scholars program at my school I have a job and I'm a double major so there's like a lot on my plate as well so I understand um a bit of what she was going through I don't think I had it nearly as bad as her but still I get it um but there is this other character named Garrett and Garrett is taking a very big interest in Hannah not because like you know normally he would not have taken an interest in her because he's a popular hockey player but he is in that class as well and also bombed the midterm like everybody else and so he basically tracks her down to convince her to help tutor him for this midterm and she's like bruh I don't got the time for this nonsense because literally I have all this stuff going on and you are not something else I want to add in to this equation and he just doesn't take no for an answer which I just don't really like that because I've actually been going to events for the women's center and they talk a lot about how in media it is seen like especially like in rom-com movies like women often will be like no like I don't like you whatever whatever and the men will like keep being persistent and like showing up to their job and like contacting people that they know and like we romanticize it in media but like in real life that is creepy as hell and like 
not good so like now i'm kind of looking at that stuff with more of a critical eye because you know if it's like a dark romance if it is self-aware of what it's doing it doesn't bother me but like when it's like a rom-com that's being romanticized for like especially younger people it just tends to make me question things a little bit but that is like kind of a separate issue that we could talk about in a whole separate video but she eventually decides to help tutor him because there is this crush that she has that is a popular I think football player and Garrett is like oh well if you are seen with me out and about then he's gonna get jealous and he's gonna want you so they kind of make this deal where she'll tutor him and he'll like take her out to like different things so she's seen with him so it'll make her crush jealous and like like her and so as I said I did like this book I think it was enjoyable the characters are not stand out for me I know everybody's like Garrett Graham on TikTok and I'm not Garrett Graham was fine he was okay he he's not anything special to me and as I said romanticizing constant like um disregard of another person's decisions is like not the cutest and also this is like such a small moment that I noticed but Hannah was gonna go on a phone call with her parents or something like that and she was like oh I don't want to talk to them because they're gonna be talking about like the environment again it seemed like Hannah was like upset that they were talking about climate change and how like the world is kind of collapsing because of climate change and it kind of seemed like she didn't really believe in it it didn't like state it so explicitly but she was like annoyed that her parents were gonna keep going on about climate change and I'm just like is it because they do it all the time or is it because you don't believe in it and that wasn't clarified but that stuck out to me something that I didn't really like but I think that this is a fun fast romance and I definitely love like hockey aspects in this but I think it just wasn't a standout for me but I definitely want to continue on with the series and I think that because this is one of L. Kennedy's first works I think her writing will definitely get better and develop more later on. The next book that I gave 3.5 stars was actually a novella and it was For He Can Creep and I read this for the Buzz Wordathon because it was like pronouns so it had he in it and this one was very weird. I was kind of debating between a 3 and a 3.5. I still don't know what exactly it is. It was just like weird to me. So in this book we follow a cat. This novella is completely from a perspective of a cat and he is trying to save his master. His master actually like is in an insane asylum and the cat lives with him. This is more like back in the day and this is based off like a real story. Well it's about this man in a insane asylum who wrote this poem and this is based off the poem and so this the master is an actual poet in this novella and he feels like he is being channeled not channeled but like asked by god to write this poem that's gonna like save the world and in the past or something he actually like sold his soul to satan or like did something for satan and now satan is coming to collect on that bargain that deal and so he is now asking the poet instead to instead of writing this poem for god he's gonna write a poem for satan that basically is going to bring like the apocalypse and destroy humanity so the cat is trying to save the master from satan and save humanity and it's just very weird i really like the cover and that's how i was drawn to it and as i said i did like it i honestly thought this again was going to be more horror than it was but it is marketed as a fantasy i just get these ideas and so i feel like books that are like have horror elements like i just want them to do it and just be horror and this one was kind of like horror a little bit but more in like a um funny but childish funny way where like it would like in the book it would have like splat or like something like that where like the words would be and it was giving like really childish I don't know why the horror just felt like it was like be horror for a child like like goosebumps type horror which I just wasn't a big fan of but I did like the rest of the writing I thought it was really nice and I just thought this was such a unique idea and the fact that it's based off a real story was really enjoyable to me I definitely really liked that and having like the poems in it and like having Satan in here was really interesting but I think I just wanted it to be more horror than it was. So moving on to my four stars, I have The Love Hypothesis, which I read in a reading vlog with this book. It, the reading vlog's not up yet, but it should be up within the next couple of weeks. And this book, I really, really like. It was a Swim Sister book club pick for January. And if you want to know more of our thoughts, I will link the live show in the cards, obviously. But this book, 
I did enjoy, but it was really hype for me because of TikTok. And one of my friends absolutely adores this book. Like one of my friends that I know from like in person. And so I thought I was going to love this. And I did really, really enjoy it. It just, again, wasn't a knockout for me. And I'll probably never think about this specific couple, maybe this book, but not this specific couple. I think that's what really makes a romance for me is if I'm really, really, really attached to the characters in the couple. And if I'm not, then it's probably not going to be a five star for me. But if I have that, I will overlook other problems to give it a five star because it just means so much to me to ha have a connection to characters so in this book we follow our main character olive and i'm sure y'all know what this is about but in this book we follow our main character olive and she is a phd student and she like had this guy that she was like kind of dating or whatever but now they're not together in any sort of way at all but her friend kind of has an interest in him and her friend does not really want to go after him at all because she doesn't want to like betray all of in that way but all of us like it's fine like whatever like i literally don't care so to kind of give her friend a push to feel like it's okay to pursue this guy she tells her that she is going to go on a date and like she's dating this new person so she told her that she's going to go out on a date and then she's actually just like at the university doing research and her friend shows up so she kisses the first person that she sees in the hallway which happens to be this mean grumpy professor adam and so now she kissed this professor which one is like not appropriate for, for this type of academic environment obviously because it's a professor and a grad student but also he's like a grumpy mean professor who like makes people cry and like like the grad students do not like him so now she's like oh no like what am i gonna do like mm. and so adam actually agrees to fake date her and she's like curious as to why adam would agree to this or even propose this idea because he's not known to be very nice but she just kind of goes along with it and they fake date for a while to like help okay and they fake date for a while to help Olive's friend feel comfortable pursuing this man and so I really did like the aspects in this of like seeing a grad student I will probably have to go to grad school and well I not, will not be doing stem research but if I do follow my majors then those definitely have research in them so I thought that was really really interesting and I also liked the commentary this had in here about women in academic environments or even like in the workplace often are scared to speak up about um, mistreatment and abuse of power that men hold against them because they believe that nobody's going to believe them and how men use that to manipulate and twist women into doing what they want and that commentary really 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 made this book a lot better for me I absolutely love that and I think this book needed something like that to ground it and as I said those were like the two aspects that I really really liked and everything else in this was like pretty good like the writing was good the characters were decent but it's just not super memorable for me besides it being set at a university during someone's grad school I also was really expecting this to be hella smutty because that's what they were talking about on book talk but we can't trust them because this had one smut scene it was a long smut scene but it was one and I'm just like y'all literally need to readjust your scales calibrate them please because this your thermometer is just not hitting right maybe your clock you didn't change for daylight savings time I don't know what's going on but you need to fix it because the steam was not it wasn't like the, this the steam wasn't bad like okay it was there but I wouldn't be like oh my god this is so steamy like how they were like they were just shoving it down people's throats and it was too much because they're liars I just I don't know so the next book that I gave four stars was The Deep by River Solomon I really like this book a lot in this we follow these like mermaid sirens who live in the ocean obviously and they were African slaves that were thrown off the ships and we follow one specific character and she i forget what they call it but she basically holds on to all the memories and trauma that everybody has experienced over time because now it's been like a long time since they originally were like thrown off the ships so she holds all that trauma from like the clan basically and once a year or like once every couple years she shares this trauma and but everybody else kind of forgets it still and so that person is like the only one who really holds on to the trauma and while i think this was amazing i could not give it a full five stars not because of fault of the book i feel like i'm honestly just too dumb to understand it so i just 
couldn't give it a full five stars because I wish I loved it, loved it. But again, I just don't think I fully grasped and understood everything because of, I don't know. My brain is a 2004 Dell laptop computer. It just doesn't process things the same way as other people do. And it, this is kind of like the fifth season for me. The fifth season, I know it's phenomenal, but I think I just did not understand it. And especially because there's like a huge twist in here that like is an amazing twist but i literally didn't even know until someone told me like i read the whole book went months without knowing the twist because i just didn't comprehend it but this book was not nearly as bad as that one but i still just i really loved the way this wove black trauma and that being held on to with sirens and mermaids and i think this definitely has a lot of commentary relating to how intergenerational trauma travels and this is obviously told in a very fantastical way but that is real and so i found it really interesting that one person held on to that for the entire community but that actually is what happens in real life with african americans and black people in general and minorities is they hold on to intergenerational trauma for generations and it's not just one person it's every person holds on to this trauma and i just really love that commentary so much and the way that it was told with sirens and mermaids because i love them so much and again like i would highly recommend this book like really 10 out of 10 but for me i just feel like i was a little too stupid to appreciate it fully but i definitely think i will reread it at some point maybe in a couple years when my brain is a little bit more more through college or something i don't know but i think that maybe on a reread i'd pick more up and be able to appreciate it fully so the next book that I read is obviously House of Sky and Breath by Sarah J Maas, which is surprising that I gave four stars to some people, but I have a reading vlog on this. Not many people watched it, but it is completely spoiler free and it's more of like a follow me at college while I read this book. So I do talk about this book, but if you just want to see what it's like to go to college, you can also watch it and I don't spoil like the first book either at all so if you haven't read the series you can still definitely watch that vlog and I'll link that in the cards, but I gave this book four stars, which I don't know I this book was actually gonna be like a three 3.5 stars but this ending really saved it for me but I've heard so many people I've heard people who give it gave it one star heard people that gave it five stars and I've just heard so many different opinions I think I just have to settle in the middle and I obviously really enjoyed this book a lot I'm not gonna get into it too much because one I have a whole vlog about it but also this is a second book in a series and I did really like it but I feel like this was very very similar to the first book and I love the first book but I just don't think it did it as well as the first book there's a mystery in this book like the first book and honestly like the reason that they're investigating the mystery is very similar to the first book but I feel like this mystery like there wasn't as much of a connection to it and it seemed too big and existential for that reason from the first book to still be the reason for this one if that makes sense i just felt like i feel like for it to be such a different problem and such a different mystery i feel like having the same catalyst and motivation from the first book did not make sense for this same mystery and i think it needed to be something else i've heard people say that they have theories on why that is i'm not usually a theory maker so i don't really have theories in that way but i need them to tell me because maybe then i'll agree and maybe i want to raise my rating but i didn't if i didn't think of it when i was reading i feel like it's not super fair and obviously i love the writing i love the world so much like anything sarah j mass will honestly probably never get less than a three star for me because i just love her characters and her world so much but this one with just the plot just idled so much for me and it just idled and this book literally sarah j mass said in a live show that this book was for sure guaranteed to have a threesome and it did not have one Stop fucking lying. so that was really disappointing but i really did like some of the other characters that we explored in this book like therian and rune who were brought up in the first book two characters i really loved having them more in here but there was also a lot of characters that i just did not care about who were discussed a lot in here and i was just like okay and like i just don't care but the end with like the re the reveal of the mystery really had me quaking and also like there's another part of it after that that's been what everybody's been talking about and that literally had mind blown like i really did not think sarah j mass was going to take this book where she did she really just did what she wanted to do and did not listen to anybody else and i love that for her i think that's very iconic but if you do want to know more of my thoughts i will definitely link that above and if you have read this book at the very 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 end of the vlog there is a spoiler portion so if you do want to know exactly what i'm talking about 
it is in the end of that vlog. Moving on to my 4.5 star of the month that is set by Alexandria House. This is my first Alexandria House, but everybody that I know who reads romance, specifically black romance, loves Alexandria House, and I have to completely agree. As you can tell, I give this book 4.5 stars. It is a novella, and on my hoopla, I have the whole series. So this series basically follows three brothers. So it's Set, Ja, and Shu, and there are just three different brothers, and we follow their romances. And I just really, really love the writing in this. It's very reminiscent to me of Rosie Adams. And I just love the writing because you can tell it's written by a black author. You can just tell in these that this is a black romance series. So it's not like or interracial at all. It's two black characters. It's black love. And I absolutely just adore it. I really am definitely going to read more Alexandria House because these ones are so short. The audiobooks are like two to three hours and they're so good. I have started to continue on with the series in March, so I'm just really loving it. But this one specifically, we follow this main character and, and she has like this one steamy chance night with this man named Set. And they kind of have now a mutually beneficial arrangement where they basically like just have hookups but it's a little bit more serious than that like because it's it's not giving sugar daddy but like they'll fly out because they don't necessarily live together and i believe the main character in this is a teacher if i remember and she also has a daughter so i really liked how it explored that because her daughter is grown and i think she has she has a grandchild so i really like the series because it does focus on older romantic relationships but i don't remember how old set is but i believe they're all in their 40s and so this explores like a toxic past relationship it explores like being a grandparent being older finding love again when you're older and it's just again like it's these are very 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 steamy in my opinion but you can really feel the chemistry between the characters and again it's black love and i just absolutely adored this book so much that i had to continue on so soon which never happens for me like i never continue with the series like the next month like that does not happen so the fact that i am is saying a lot because i really really did like this novella so this is actually the last book that I read in February and it was my five star of the month and that is Razor Blade Tears by S.A. Cosby. I didn't think I was going to like this book as much but I really really enjoyed it. This is a thriller where we follow two fathers Ike and Buddy Lee and their sons were gay and married and they recently got murdered and they are not it's not really being looked into ike is black and buddy lee is white and that plays a big role in the story as well obviously one of the boys that got killed was black and the other one was white and they also had a child and so now ike and his wife are taking care of their grandchild both ike and buddy lee are actually ex-cons and they were honestly very homophobic to their kids when they were alive they did not really accept them as being gay they didn't treat them really right at all to be honest but in their death they are starting to realize that being gay is an identity that's very important and even though you may not understand it it is still something that you should try to understand and that you should accept and love your child for who they are and who they want to be because you may not have them forever and I think that was so beautifully portrayed throughout this. And honestly, Buddy Lee was a racist character as well. But you feel for them. And they're trying so hard to grow because they were literally growing out of their grief. I think that's so beautiful how they something so horrific is causing them to grow and understand. And they're using like a horrible tragedy to honestly become better people. And I think that's so just beautifully done in this and these two actually team up to figure out who killed their sons and they are on on a revenge trip basically they are getting their revenge no matter what anybody else says and this one is honestly pretty graphic like graphic killing scenes and i was loving it because i was like i was like who doesn't want a revenge alert that is racial commentary lgbtq commentary and brutal murder scenes it was giving what was supposed to be gave and this did take a little bit of a turn towards the end that i thought was a little bit unbelievable but i don't think it was unbelievable because of the lifestyle that these two men lived in the past i think because of that it made it definitely a lot more realistic and i think it worked in this story i think that this just has so many beautiful things to say and i honestly loved seeing two older men start to change and grow because as someone who has a 50 almost 60 year old white father that is not something that this older generation does they don't really grow they're very set in their ways they're very stubborn so seeing the these people be able to grow and change and develop and honestly like get out of their stubborn traditional mentalities really was 
as I said, beautiful. And I just absolutely adored it. And I think it is so stunning. And I will definitely recommend it to everybody. I know some people have not liked this book. And I'm not sure why. I mean, I know some people really have not liked um, Buddy Lee, which I completely understand. And it kind of humanizes this character. But I honestly think that's something that needs to be done. Treating people completely like an enemy is going to push them away and further into their horrible beliefs. So I really love this book. And I honestly would recommend like all these books that I read this month, except maybe... The Hollow Places, I feel like that one is honestly very divisive in itself, but I feel like the rest of these were really, really good and I think most people will enjoy them. So if you have any interest in these, I would definitely recommend picking them up. So we made it to the end of today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I would love to hear from y'all in the comments below. I love getting comments. It's, it's honestly my favorite part of posting, even if you just put a little emoji, which I'm going to start doing like put this emoji in the comments. I would really love it. So if you made it to the end of this video, put the little like emoji with like the one tier, the one tier, you know what I'm talking about? Because of razor blade tears. I mean, I guess it should be like the constantly crying one because that's like a lot of tears while that one's a singular tear. But for razor blade tears, we're going to just do the one singular tear emoji. And as I said, that is the end of today's video and I will talk to you guys in my next one. Bye everybody. Trying to look like you're winning. I'm writing rhymes in the kitchen. Soaking in moments we live in, yeah. You got the nerve to be on me. Faking your life for the IG.